it is time for member statements. I recognize a member from Algoma, Manitou. Thank you, Speaker. Um, yeah, getting getting used to taking off the mask once in a while. Um, I want to give a big thank you to uh, Nancy Johnson from the Northern Family Council Network and along to the member from uh, Meshkegawak, James Bay, for organizing a fabulous, informative meeting last night. Um, I can share words that were uh, words as far as how people felt last night as far as passionate. People cared. There was lots of love, but there was also a lot of frustration, people that were frightened, and uh, a lot of concern that were raised by families that were there. Um, we participated at the Zoom meeting. There were well over 40 participants on the call, ranging from individuals from North Bay to uh, Thunder Bay to Tim and Sudbury across the North Shore from all over Northern Ontario. And their concerns were for their loved ones that are in long-term care homes. Their concerns in regards to the testing process, the consistencies with protocols, the how certain things are being done in certain homes where they're not being done in others. Overall, it was uh, an eye-opening uh, meeting for myself. It gives me uh, the fire to re-engage and, and pursue once again uh, the Northern Family Coalition Network across my riding. And I would encourage all of the MPPs in this House to do the same so that we can get down to the root cause of what's happening and what is so worrisome for families in long-term care homes. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Milton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm just going to start by removing my Milton Strong uh, mask with me here this morning. Mr. Speaker, it is always incredible to see community groups helping one another right across the province, and that can't be more true than my riding of Milton. Started as a way to increase the feeling of community and involvement of those that live in Milton, the dads of Milton have grown into a passionate group of over 700 members. Those 700 continue to organize fundraising events around town that support our local community. I had the privilege to attend safely the Dads of Milton third annual Step Up to the Plate event and fundraiser at Lions Park. The enthusiasm, dedication, and commitment that the dads of Milton bring to this event each and every year is something to admire. This year's Step Up to the Plate fundraiser raised over $5,000 for Food for Kids Halton, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank Canadian singer, songwriter, and Milton native, Danny Fernandez, for coming to show his support and hang out with dads all day. I also want to thank all of the dads who helped organize and put many hours to make this event a reality each and every year. Special thanks goes out to Mario, Jeffrey, and James for their dedication in leading this effort for the third year in a row. I look forward to being part of the fourth inning of this event next year, Mr. Speaker. And once again, I want to congratulate all of the dads in Milton. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Years ago, the community came together to design the plan for the Jane and Finch Community Hub, a vision that would see community members from all ages and all walks of life enjoy a safe and enriching space, a physical manifestation of a dream in a community accustomed to challenges, barriers, and far too often, nightmares. So when this government revealed it would be selling off the land to build the Jane and Finch Community Hub to the highest bidder, the shock and frustration was palpable. The Jane and Finch community mobilized in opposition to this betrayal and were joined by voices across the city and beyond. I thank everyone who stood up to this government, urging them to reaffirm Metrolink's earlier agreement to give the lands to the City of Toronto to build a future community hub. Under this immense pressure, Metrolink has now indicated they would reaffirm their earlier commitment to transfer the land. Speaker, I will not breathe a sigh of relief until the lands are transferred, and I will keep up the pressure. We are in this mess today because the former Liberal government refused to come to the table and transfer the lands, as negotiated between the community and Metrolinx. Promises can be broken, and words are often just wind. Our community is done with false hope 
and we will continue to hold the government to account until the lands are transferred. Do the right thing. Transfer the lands. The time is now. Thank you. The next member's statement, the member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, welcome back to the Legislature. It's great to see you in the chair after a short August break. Like so many families across the province, Speaker, the first weeks of September are always busy in my house with our kids returning to school. This week, all five headed back to the classroom, with my youngest starting junior kindergarten and my oldest going into his first year of high school. This school year will be like none other for my children, their peers, their educators, and our support staff. But under the careful guidance of our public health experts, including Ontario's Chief Medical Officer Dr. David Williams and Sick Kids Hospital, our province has been able to put a plan in place so they can safely return to school. I want to thank our school board officials at the Waterloo Region District and Waterloo Catholic School Boards, who did a great job communicating with parents and students about how schools will look once they reopen, and our educators and support staff who worked tremendously hard to welcome our students back to school. Returning to school during the middle of a global pandemic is an unprecedented challenge that we are all facing together. We all have a key role to play in keeping our children safe. But with our cautious and comprehensive plan that has been informed by medical experts and the work that has been done with educators and school boards, we're ensuring the proper protocols are in place so our children can return to their desks and be with their classmates and friends, albeit at a distance. To every student in Waterloo Region and across this province, I hope you have a fun and safe return back to school this fall. Thanks, Speaker. Thank you very much. The next statement, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Over the last difficult six months, we've had the gaps that exist in everything from health care to education to employment laid bare by COVID-19. In Toronto and in urban communities across Ontario, the pandemic has also shown us how vital our shared spaces are to our quality of life. Parks and green spaces are seeing more use than ever before. The requirement to keep distance has forced a reshaping of our streets with active transportation finally given the priority it deserves. In Davenport, new bike lanes, pedestrian-friendly quiet streets, and expanded patterns Audio space have helped change our neighbourhoods for the better. At the same time, the economic damage of the pandemic is visible on our main streets. Small businesses left to fend for themselves by a patchy series of government supports that were too little, too late, have been shuttered by the thousands throughout Toronto. Without safe and affordable housing, people have been forced to live in tents wherever they can find space. And we are losing some iconic landmarks in our cityscape as well as the government continues to put the interests of big developers ahead of our local communities. Black-owned businesses in Little Jamaica, LGBTQ spaces on Church Street, the Matador in my own riding, even sneaky D's are all at risk. Tools that did exist to allow cities to enhance public spaces like Section 37 and 42 funds were stripped away by this government in Bill 108. Developers are seeing big gains from proximity to schools, but our school boards are starved of funds, the largest of them barred from using education development charges. Pandemic, the pandemic has shrunk our worlds, reminding us just how important our local neighbourhoods are. For those neighbourhoods to thrive, we need affordable housing, walkable, bikeable streets, green spaces to stretch out, and diverse main streets where businesses can actually afford to operate. Thank you. Thank you. A deputate of Orléans. Member for Orléans. Uh, the beginning of the school year always brings with it a special energy a combination of stress, anxiety, and excitement, and this year, even more so. As a parent, my wife and I have had many conversations over the summer about the return to school and what it will mean for our family. And as an MPP, I've heard from many residents about their trepidation, their stress, and their concerns. I've heard about the confusion caused by the ever-changing criteria, standards, and start dates. But now that school is here, I want to thank all of the teachers, early childhood educators, custodians, bus drivers, and administrators for the hard work they've put in to try to bring some normalcy back to our children's lives. I want to thank Jennifer Coleman, the principal at Kareen Wilson High School, for showing me and Trustee Penny the amazing work her team has done to prepare for school. Jennifer had to prepare four different back-to-school plans because the guidance from Toronto continually changed. Her teaching and administrative teams have done an amazing job. I'd also like to thank Jean Gauthier, principal of uh, this Notre Place school, to clear that their commitment 
towards uh, our children's safety is essential. A difficult uh, ch time, and likely there's more change coming. But your efforts to bring professional, publicly funded education back to our children are very much appreciated, and thank you for everything that you do. The member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This 42nd Legislative Assembly has been notable for many positive things, but I'm proud to say the greatest among them in the year of the pandemic is the way the people have, of Ontario have responded to our government's actions. For the most part, the 14 million plus of us have acted with the warmth and the care of a small community, looking out for each other, caring for each other, and taking action to minimize the risk to others as we face an invisible foe that experts say is at least three times more infectious than the flu that kills too many of us every year. Today, though, I would like to thank the citizens of Hastings, Lennox, and Addington for doing their part and pass on their thanks to the rest of Ontario for doing your part to keep us all as safe as possible. Now, as this fall weather settles in, we have reached another milestone along our battle route with COVID-19. The evidence so far is that recent cases have come from letting our guard down in large-scale social situations, not just from schools or restaurants. So it's no time to take our foot off the gas on the safety protocols that we have found have saved lives, whether washing hands, covering our mouths and noses, to stop incoming and outgoing infections and social distancing about two metres apart whenever possible. So let's beat this thing by doing more of what we've done already. As one of the greatest race drivers of all time said, you don't take your foot off the gas until you're over the finish line. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. I'm sure we've all opened up Facebook and saw a picture from here's what you were doing last year on this day. And today I'd like to do this for the legislature. Last year this week, all the legislatures, the legislators joined 80,000 other people and came to the little town of Werner, happened to be in my riding, for the international plowing match. People from all over Ontario, from all over Canada. Now that we're in COVID, that sounds like such a foreign experience. But it, those events are the events that build the fabric of rural Ontario. Sadly, tragically, and, and rightfully so, the IPM has been uh, postponed for this year. And it's our sincere hope that we will all be back there again next year to celebrate rural Ontario. And it's not just the IPM this weekend, the second biggest event that happens every year in uh, my riding, usually the biggest event, the, the New Liskert Fall Fair. The New Liskert Fall Fair has gone virtual. Their board of directors have done everything they can to keep the passion alive. And I commend them for doing that. But the fact that they've gone virtual puts salt in some of the wounds in rural Ontario, and it's not their fault. Because virtual, for many people, in rural Ontario, with no broadband, is more a slap in the face than it is a solution. Thank you, Speaker. The next statement, I believe, the member for Niagara West. Thank you, Speaker. Niagara is one of the most innovative regions in the province, and a great example of that ingenuity has been the response of local entrepreneurs, Cleanworks Medical, and Pure Life Machinery. Located in Beansville, in my riding of Niagara West, Cleanworks is an incredible success story about an Ontario apple farmer, Paul Moyer, taking technology used to decontaminate produce and converting it into a device to, that can decontaminate personal protective equipment. As announced by the Premier on his Niagara tour in August, Cleanworks and Pure Life Machinery have received $2 million from the Ontario Together Fund to help manufacture a one-of-a-kind sanitizing, sanitizing device called the Clean Flow Healthcare Mini. This Ontario-made device can decontaminate hundreds and hundreds of N95 masks per hour, along with many other things, including personal protective equipment. The investment by the Ontario Together Fund will help enable Cleanworks to scale up their production, triple their capacity, bring jobs to Niagara, and ensure those on the front lines have PPE and other equipment to continue the fight against COVID-19. 
Cleanworks is a great example of the Ontario Together spirit and just another reason why our government is making targeted, effective investments to support homegrown trailblazers. By investing in Cleanworks, our government is not only supporting local economic recovery in Niagara, but ensuring that we are ready with necessary Ontario-made PPE and equipment today and into the future. Member statements. Member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Speaker. It feels great being back to the Legislative Chamber, where I continue to serve and represent the riding of Markham Unionville. Mr. Speaker, while COVID-19 and the health and safety of Ontarians remained our government's top priority, our government continues to work non-stop to serve address and improve the lives of Ontarians every single day. In July, I was proud to join the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Honourable Steve Clark, and municipal and federal partners. As Canada and Ontario announced the investment of over $4.2 million in the Unionville Senior Affordable Housing Development, to give seniors in Markham, Unionville and York Region the support services they deserve. As part of the Social Infrastructure Fund, the new building will have 264 units, as well as a seniors' hub and community space. Mr. Speaker, our seniors helped build our province, and our government believes that every Ontarian should be able to find a home that meets their needs and their budgets. This announcement is critical for our community and will enhance the quality of life for many people now and well into the future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements this morning.